Don't you hate it when you're trying to sculpt and your clay cools down and becomes rock hard so quickly? Well, keep watching and I'll show you how to keep your clay at the oh so perfect temperature by building a clay warming oven. Hi, I'm Kazool and welcome to my lair. Now, I want to show you today how I built my clay warming oven. I built this about a year ago and it's been really life-changing since I've built it. So I'm really excited to show you. So like about a year ago, I was having the hankering to, to sculpt a little more and I, but I always run into the same problems when I want to sculpt a lot is that I, the clay always is too cold to work with. You see, I primarily use monster clay in my sculpting and monster clay is a wax oil hybrid clay. Um, so that means at room temperature, it's actually quite firm and can be carved. It's a little, it behaves a little closer to wax. Um, and then when you warm it up, it becomes soft. Uh, monster clay you can even heat up all the way to a liquid to pour into molds. It's got some really cool properties. I love using monster clay. But like I said, it can cool down and it you can't form it in your hands anymore. So it needs to be heated up to a certain degree. So I used to heat up my clay in my regular kitchen oven. It comes in these nice tubs that are oven safe that you can easily just put in the oven at a low temp and wait for it to to heat up. Now, it takes a while to heat up a whole tub, so that, that's one thing that takes a long while. And if your kitchen is on the other side of the house from your workroom, you can see where it wastes a lot of time if it cools down, especially now that it's winter time and your house is a little bit cooler, it cools off really fast. And I always just ran into that problem where it would cool off too fast. Now, another solution that I tried was to get a little toaster oven. Um, the problem with that is the oven size wasn't quite big enough for the tub of clay that I had. So I'd used another glass dish and, uh, but the toaster oven, even at its lowest setting, still got too hot and would heat up the monster clay too much. It would become a liquid. And if you heated it at the liquid for too long, it like the components separate and you have to like mix it all back up again and wait for it to cool to knead back to kind of be normal. Um, so the toaster oven didn't work. It was too hot. Another thing that I tried was a crock pot and that was kind of the same deal. It would just get to a liquid too fast and it was annoying to have to try to like scoop out some liquid onto a cooler surface, wait for it to cool down enough to where it was handleable. So I really wanted a, a different solution that would keep the clay at a good working temperature, but not melt it, um, but keep it warm for a long time. So like for years, I actually resorted to putting uh, like a, a ball full, a palm full of clay into my bra because it would hold it against my body and keep it like exactly the right temperature. Do not recommend that ladies. It did cause some skin irritation sometimes and sometimes I would forget it was there. And then I'd find it later in the day and be like, whoops, I that's gonna squish into my clothes. So it's not a good idea. It wasn't perfect. I was limited to only a small amount of clay that was workable at a time. And it, it just wasn't a good solution. So I finally, at the beginning of last year, I said, I'm gonna solve this problem once and for all. And here's the solution I came up with. So I've seen some other artists do some similar type projects on the internet. And that's where I started with my research. Uh, some blogs had uh, where you just took a regular cardboard box and lined the inside with paper and put a light on top and that was theirs. I saw other artists take one of those styrofoam like uh, coolers and do the same deal. Um, I liked both those solutions. I kind of wanted to combine the two and make it a look a little nicer and be a bit more permanent than those solutions. So I was looking on Amazon one day and I found this little storage cubby and it was for a, a fairly good price. And I looked and 
it's made out of recycled material. Like this kind of looks like wood, but it's not. It's what they call Z-board. It's very tightly compressed paperboard and corrugation. So it's kind of like an ultra compressed uh, cardboard box with a nice veneer. And so it's, it's sturdy, it was easy to assemble. It's 100% recyclable, they say, and made with like 90% or more uh, recycled material in the first place. So those are huge pluses in my book. So this little cubby, I bought it and turned out perfect for this project. And over the last year, this thing has seen so many hours of use and it's really upped my productivity. One of my most used tools of this last year. Now we'll get on to show you how I built this thing. So here are the ingredients you'll need to craft your very own clay warming oven. You'll need the storage cubby, an aluminum reflector clamp light. You can get these at Lowe's and just remove the clamp. And you'll need a light bulb to go with that. Also some insulation foam. I got mine free from a friend who, did, who had some extra from a construction project. Aluminum foil, some clear tape, and a utility knife. So the first thing to do is to get out the pieces of the storage cube and find the top piece that we'll need to cut a hole through. You can identify it by the little white door, magnetic door latch. We'll take the aluminum reflector thing and trace a circle around and then draw a circle on the interior. So we need the circle as big as possible, but still have a lip for it to sit on. Then you can simply take your utility knife and start cutting through the, the paper layers. Now this part is a little bit of a pain in the butt. There might be an easier way with bigger tools, but I decided to keep it simple. And if you just work slow and keep going just layer by layer and not try to cut too, through too many layers at once. It's fairly simple. Just keep digging at it and peeling layer by layer away. You see, I, I got out a pair of needle nose pliers to help just grab the pieces to rip them. You can see just how cool this material is. It's it's really just like ripping apart a cardboard box. There you have it. You can clean up the edges a bit, but now we have our hole, we can move on to the next part. And that is doing a rough assembly of the box. Now I'm not going to pull off the adhesive layers yet, but it's, you see, it's really easy, just peg construction. Um, the reason we're putting it together now is because we need to start getting the measurements for the foam that's going on the inside. And you'll especially want to take note of how the door swings so you don't have too much foam at the bottom. Now I took all these measurements and you can do your own measurements, but I'll throw them up on the screen, my own measurements. Now the insulation foam I had was two inches thick, which you probably only need one inch thick. The only place I used it at its full thickness, two inches, was on the base. Uh, that was just to boost the monster clay up a little closer to the light. Um, I did cut the pieces on the side and the back down to one inch, which is a little tricky to do, um, even with a hot wire cutter, but it can be done. I do recommend starting with the one inch if you can. When I built my personal machine, I did use just a utility knife to cut the pieces down. Even cutting the two inch to the one inch, it was really tricky, but I was able to do it. This go around, I used my hot wire cutter to cut down the pieces, and I did that off camera. I took it down to the garage, wore a respirator, because it is really nasty stuff to breathe in those fumes. 
You can see here, I, I messed up a little bit on my measurements in the back and that's okay if you do too. You can just cut an extra piece and use toothpicks to hold it together. With all the pieces cut out, it's time to start wrapping them in aluminum foil. Um, I just use the clear tape to hold the pieces in place and that works really well. I also thought about maybe using a spray glue to keep it on there, but the clear tape worked just fine and it shouldn't be seeing too much movement that, so that it will come off. Now keep in mind when you're making the measurements and cutting things that the aluminum foil does add bulk. So things that may be a, a little loose before will become snug. So you may have to open up the foil again and trim off some pieces of foam. Now I also took a piece of foil and uh, taped it to the door so that that would be a reflective surface. I didn't want to add any bulk by putting foam on the door, um, but I still wanted the reflective surface. I made sure to seal that all the way around just because that would be a high movement area and I didn't want anywhere around the edge where it could peel up. Putting foil on the top was is the trickiest part, but foil is pretty forgiving with the shapes, so I just shaped it, or like squoze it around in place and taped it as I went. I didn't feel the need to completely cover what would be the ceiling of the clay oven in foil, so I just taped it all around the edges after trimming it up a bit just to keep it in place. And I, I made sure to trim the top nicely so that the, the aluminum reflector would cover that so it would just, just have a, a nicer overall appearance. Now it's time to do like a final, uh, like, test fit assembly and you see here there's a little bit too much bulk down around the door hinge so I will need to take out the pieces and trim them down so that there isn't that interference. Now it's moving easy, tested to make sure, and since it's not permanently stuck together, it was pretty easy to just flop apart, but it all works great now, fits together good. Um, oh, just a note about the light bulb. Um, this is the kind that I used. Um, I don't think that an LED bulb, which most of the bulbs that you can buy will work, I don't think it'll put off enough heat. I haven't tested it yet, but just be aware of that when you're searching for light bulbs. Now you can see the clay going in is super rock hard. After about 20 minutes, it is starting to turn liquid. Now you can manage the uh, temperature of the clay by turning on and off the light. But thanks to all the f insulation foam that's in there, it keeps the clay nice and warm for a very long time. And if it starts to get a little bit cold, just turn the light on for a few more minutes and it keeps it great. And so it's perfect to just make like a little clay sketch on one of my one third scale busts. Like let's say I wanted to make a cool sculpted mask that was kind of like Hogger, a very toothy grin. I can just quickly sketch that up with my clay 
And there you go. I have like a little idea of where I want to go from here. And that's it. It's a very simple and straightforward build, and I know it'll help you a lot if you go and build this. Now, this is my original one, the, I, and I built a secondary one that's over there for, this, for demonstration in this video. I do not need a second clay warming oven, so the reason why I didn't fully assemble that one by ripping off the adhesive strips was so that I could break it down and ship it to somebody who wants it. Um, I'll have the listing in my Etsy store. Uh, the price is only to cover uh, the materials and the shipping, so I'm not making any profit off of it, but it can just go to someone who, who needs it but maybe can't build it for themselves for some reason. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And also, good luck with all your monster building projects. I'm Kazool, reminding you to embrace your inner beast.